Hey, good morning. Good morning. Everybody's just pretty sad. It's 8.05 in the morning and everybody's just wearing masks. Can't sit with your buddy. How are y'all doing? Woo! <laughs> I got some motivation. Fake motivation is still motivation. My name is Sergeant Corpus. I work at Mass 6. I am the UT chief there. I am also a UMAP it Core Master Trainer. So training, if you have any sergeants or above that are competent, reliable, I will train them up and you will have your own UMAP it trainers. Welcome to BITS Training. This is UMAP it 3.0. It's Unit Marine Awareness Prevention Integration Training. We're gonna be covering behavioral health and combat operational stress. We're gonna cover some more difficult situations such as suicide, substance misuse, and domestic abuse. So let's kick it. So these are your training object objectives. We're gonna give you some tools to take care of behavioral health topics. So you're gonna increase your awareness, uh, learn that anyone and everyone can and have experienced stress at some point in their life. So we're going to be able to build some skills and apply some good decision making as well. We're going to watch that video now. Stay alive. <laughs> Stas our Spiller, if you can hear me up in the box, it's that first video. Not a rocket scientist, but Cricket. Okay, well, if the video's not going to work, we're just going to move on. Um, it's that sound clip that you heard earlier of the alarm going off and somebody's just waking up, I need five more minutes, and then he's getting chewed out from staff sergeant. So um, at the end of the video, though, he does do something and they stop and they breathe, they take a breath. So when you're experiencing stress, sometimes it's uh, imperative that you stop and take a pause and you breathe. There's a science behind that. When you're stressed out and you breathe and you become aware of your breathing, that it slows you down and helps you focus a little bit better. Okay, so. This is another leadership tool. It's the uh, readiness enhancer. It's called Smitter. Uh, it's 
what leaders use by strengthening their individuals, the units, and their families, uh, mitigating risks, reducing any, uh, uh, eliminating any stressors that, uh, that might uh, be there. It's pretty much kind of like performing preventive maintenance on yourself and others. Um, identifying when you or others need help, um, being able to treat that uh, with self-care, having that peer aid or you know, professional help, and also being able to reintegrate after help is received. And this is just a diagram over uh, total fitness, so your individual responsibility comes with taking care of these aspects of your life. So you have your mind having a positive attitude, um, I know this past year has been rough, and it's reflecting as I look into your faces right now. You're separated, you're wearing masks, you're inside. Uh, some of us have been, uh, if you're a reservist, you've been struck with some employ employment issues or financial issues. All of these issues that just start to take you down. Um, having those good decision-making skills, having good coping skills are what are tools that you would need to help you through more tough times. So then there's also your body, having adequate sleep, having good nutrition, exercising. If you ended up on that teleworking uh, time and you found yourself just sitting at home, you're in your sweatpants and you're ordering pizza and you're just not getting up and getting out there and exercising. Um, spirit necessarily is not um, religious. It could be your motivation. It could be your sense of purpose. And then, of course, your social values, having core values, uh, making those uh, low-risk decision making for uh, as far as alcohol involvement and having uh, good communication skills. So by having that individual responsibility, there's also your external uh, responsibility by having trusted leaders or being that trusted leader, um, having healthy peers, having healthy relationships, um, using rules and structure as a good guideline that would exemplify you as Marine, um, and also having mission focus, unit cohesion, accountability, and opportunity. Let me hold on to this. So in what are some ways that you unwind and relax and prepare yourself for challenges? Just shout some answers out. Running the old course. PT. What was that? Surfing. 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 There's nothing like being inside that tube, though. It's 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 a it's a crazy experience. Anybody else? Running. 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 Sometimes it's unforgiving, but you feel amazing at the end. Anybody else? Weightlifting. Weightlifting. You get your gains on. All right, right on. <laughs> so stress. Stress is. Who wants to read that? Come on. Can you read that for me? A physical, mental, or emotional response resulting from intense, adverse, or very demanding circumstances. Stress. Stress. Everyone experiences stress. It's physical, it's mental, it's emotional. It's a response to something like an event that's traumatic or maybe somebody cutting you off on the freeway. You experience some kind of stress. With, the stre with that, you have the stress continuum, and this is a diagram that's used across medical professionals, it's used across pretty much across the behavioral health board, where you can identify where a green is at on their stress level. As you can see on the left, it goes from green to red. And this gray line in the middle is, it says over, uh, individual responsibility. So overall, it reflects that you have uh, indi your individual responsibility to where you are at. So with the green, we're going to look at green, is the ready zone. It's a get to go marine. It's somebody who's taking pretty good responsibility over themselves, has got good time management, they're making good decisions, they're eating well. Um, 
If there is that change in behavior, though, and from your normal personality, you proceed to the yellow zone. And the yellow zone is the reacting zone. And in the reacting zone, everybody experiences the, the, the yellow zone, whether it's being cut off on the freeway or you, it's 1600 and you get last minute word change that you have to change out a truck or something and you have to do it by 1630. So you're just reacting, you're reacting to certain things. However, the difference between the yellow zone and the orange zone, which becomes more severe or more persistent, those things add up or you experience something a little more traumatic, you end up in the orange zone. Excuse me. <clears throat> so in the orange zone, you are in a much further, dis, uh, further stage of distress, or you're more impaired, or you're going to need some help. You're going to need to reach out and talk to somebody. So, <clears throat> excuse me. You're pretty much unable to function at this point and make your, get your, make your way back to the green zone. Now, so if this distress significantly impacts you even more, your career, your relationships, or you've experienced something furthermore that's going to put you beyond distress, you are in the red zone. And this is a, sta a stage of being in severe distress. You've lost your functioning. You can't really respond when you come to work or you you're just not there, if that makes sense. Um, this is when you need to check in on somebody. This is when you see a significant behavioral health change in somebody close to you or works near you. And this is where you need professional help to get you back on your feet. Okay, so... Questions, comments, concerns so far? Okay, we're gonna we're gonna keep pushing. So the decision making, uh, excuse me, the decision making diagram for OODA loop is observe, orient, decide, and act. Are there any questions or comments about this one? Because we're gonna we're gonna push. Awesome. Skip that. Skip that. Okay, we're gonna move. We're, let me take a pause. For I'm a little parched. Okay, we're going to talk about these four subjects that are difficult to talk about, especially if you have experienced it or if you know somebody that's ha that has experienced any of these things. And this is these are the negative reactions that happen when somebody is under stress or it's going to happen or there's ways to prevent this. So we're going to identify suicide, substance misuse, domestic abuse, child abuse and neglect. So suicide awareness. Who here ha knows somebody who has thought about suicide? Just stick your hands in the air. Who here has experienced that 3 a.m., your thoughts are dark, you've found yourself thinking about it at one point. Who, thank you for sharing, thank you for having the bravery to stick your hand in the air. It's not easy to talk about, it's really not. People face life challenges, all kinds of challenges. When it comes from somebody breaking up in a relationship, or it becomes from having some financial troubles, financial issues, things like that, that change your behavior, it changes your outlook on life. So, getting help early increases that likelihood for a positive outcome. Going back to
having those resources, having your support group, having trusted leaders, healthy peers, healthy relationships, your support group that backs you up to keep you in that green zone or watch to see if you make it to the orange or red zone. Some critical stressors that I mentioned a few of them. So some of the critical stressors are having that loss of relationship, having familial issues, your pending legal issues, you've got financial issues. These things can push somebody over the edge very easily. If you want to take a photo of it, you can. Okay. When you have those stressors, you'll see some behavioral changes in people that you work with on the daily. Um, some of you that are reservists, if you go back to your civilian job and you're working, you'll, you can see some changes in people that you work with. You can see it in your family. They have that social withdrawal. Some of them have that reckless behavior. Some of them are seeking those means to kill themselves. Who here in boot camp had um, the bleach taken away from laundry? No? Nobody remembers that? Okay, so it's just me. Um, they have that decreased work performance as well. Who here on social media has seen some of those questionable posts from Marines or from just people in general? They've seen those questionable posts. Social media has played a significant role in causing more stressors on people. They feel that need to share everything. They feel that need to be approved by people that they're friends with, and some of them they've never even met. And they cause, it causes these stressing, stressors, this anxiety in their mind, and it kind of injures them in their mind. So you'll see, oh, for Marines, you'll see dramatic shifts between a positive and negative emotional content. Uh, some are memes. They're pretty dark. Um, it's pretty... Uh, significant if you see somebody that normally posts something hilarious one day and then something incredibly dark the next day and you're not sure if you're not sure that it's uh, sarcasm or satire go ahead, go and ask them don't be afraid to ask somebody if they're okay reaching out to them so when I say this is difficult to talk about COVID last year there was, a, there was a Marine, there was a veteran, and he had a post on Facebook, and that post was of a recreational park somewhere in Arizona. And it turned out to be the very last thing he ever saw before he completed his suicide. This Marine, this veteran, had all the stressors that was going on in his life. He wanted to make another career change. His family wouldn't let him see his child. He's, he was divorced. He posted this picture of the last thing he ever saw. And he posted his coordinates as well. But everybody that was his friend was shocked. They were shocked. He, they knew he was going through some life stressors, but he decided to end his life that day. Now this was July of last year. This was very recent. So not more than, what, maybe half a year ago it had happened. And this veteran was friends with tons of other veterans across the board who had been going through something as well. So when this happened, all those veterans across the country, across the country, tried to go to this man's funeral, this Marine's funeral, and due to COVID, they would not allow anyone outside of his immediate family to come see him and say, pay the respects to this, this, this Marine. And that, what, that itself was a critical stressor for all those veterans, 
if you've seen those 22 veteran suicides a day, yes. That's almost what happened because Marines in Oregon, Marines in Texas, Marines in Louisiana that had all worked with this Marine all began to show those signs and they all decided to drink in his honor across like the country and there was a Zoom meeting and my husband was a part of that. Now, alcohol and depression and reacting to this, this event negatively impacted their decision-making skills, all these Marines that have worked with the, this uh, now past Marine. And it wasn't until I overheard in the garage, because my husband was in the garage during this Zoom meeting, that my husband was saying he's going to blow his head off. And I said, hold on. So I called PMO. I called PMO. PMO put my husband in hold because he was a veteran and he worked with that Marine. And it so put these Marines in distress that across the country I had to call wellness checks on all these people. I called 911. I called everybody and everybody I could to get these people help. And unfortunately, it had to be the one person closest to me, and it was my husband. So those suicide warning signals, it's very important to understand uh, your, the people close to you, the people you work with, to be able to understand those changes in them, if anything like affects them in that way. Are there any questions, comments, concerns? Okay. So, here are some safeguards that you can take with you. Leaning on that st uh, support system. If you have a good support system, you rely on them as much as you can. If you have Marines that need to see the chaplain or counselors, I'll have those resources up on the last slide. Uh, but also don't be afraid to ask for help. If you have a person that you know can put themselves in mortal danger, there's gun locks, there, there, gun locks are available, safety store medications. If you're in that person's house, um, sort of just discourage any of that use. So this is the acronym RACE, recognizing the signals, asking the question, caring with words and actions, and escorting to help. When it comes to asking the question, there's probably a longer conversation before that, before you make it okay to be able to ask that question. But know that because you're there and you're caring, you could have somebody open up to you and you get to help them out. Questions, comments, concerns? I'm gonna see if this video is working. All right, guys, great PT today. Go ahead and go change over, grab your chow, and be back at the shop by 0730. Bruh? Bruh. Hey, can I talk to you for a minute? Yeah, sure. What's up? Have you noticed anything different about Sergeant Rogers lately? Yeah, actually, I was going to ask you about that. He seems different. He seems more distant. And he's not as engaged as he used to be. Exactly. Ever since him and Melissa broke up right after our last field exercise, he's just been a bit off. Remember hearing about the command sent him to the sack after he got drunk at the barracks and got in the duty space? I don't know, I think it's still bothering him. Now that you mention it, I haven't seen him at, at the gym in weeks. I know he was really looking forward to our deployment. What are you thinking? I'd imagine if something was up, they'd take care of it at the sack, right? I don't know, let me show you some things I saw on his Facebook page this morning. Yeah, sure. I'm tired of this life. I can't do this anymore. What do you do when this is your last sunset? Damn, we should text him. Yeah. 
Hey man, what's up? I don't feel right about this. I remember you helping me out. I'm gonna go talk to him. Sounds good. Hey man, what's going on? Nothing. What did you think about PT this morning? It was fine. Hey, I saw some posts on your Facebook this morning. You mind if we talk for a minute? I guess. Have you talked to Melissa lately? Hell no. I'm sorry things didn't work out. Maybe she'll change her mind. I know you guys were way close. Yeah, I guess, but it doesn't really matter anymore. Hey man, what do you mean by that? I don't know. I just don't care about much anymore. It's all just stupid. Stupid? Are you thinking about killing yourself? I mean, yeah, maybe. Like, I thought about it. But other people probably have too, right? I mean, I can see you have a lot going on. A lot you're going through. Have you thought about talking to somebody? Like who are you? Staff sergeant? Command already made me go to SAC. I'm always here. We're always here. But have you thought about talking to the chaplain, the MFLAC, or community counselor? I don't know about all that. I'm gonna have trouble with command as it is. Look, you gotta take care of this before it really becomes an issue. You can call the chaplain if you like. It's confidential and they make sure you get everything you need. Staff Sergeant helped me out before by giving me his number. I have the number right here if you wanna call him and then I can take you wherever he can meet. All right, fine. Okay, so what happened in that video? Intervention. Intervention happened. Thank you. This Marine had all the signals and the female Marine would not let him go alone. She wanted him to know that he was not alone and she was going to escort him to be able to speak to a resource, the chaplain. What's an MFLAC? An MFLAC is a Marine Family Life Counselor, and they are certified to be able to speak to you, and they have a network, a network of resources for people to speak about mental health, behavioral health, anything to that effect. And um, they typically are attached to active duty units. So for us, we have the PHOP, Miss Elisha Logan, if she's in here. For, for reserve units, it's definitely the PHA, who has tons and tons and tons of resources that are out there to help Marines, help sailors, help, you know, just everyone they can. Okay, that's, that's done. Okay, so think of that Marine who doesn't drink alcohol. Think of that one Marine who's straight edge, who's good to go. What is that Marine like? Do you know a Marine like that? Does anybody know a Marine like that? No? Okay. Think of that Marine that you admire. Thank you. Think of that Marine that you admire. What do you admire about that Marine? If they're good to go, if they're motivating, if they're running that 300 PFT CFT, what are they like? So the black and white substance misuse is defined as use of alcohol or wrongful use of a controlled substance, prescription medication, over-the-counter medication, intoxicating substance, to an extent that it has an adverse effect on your performance, your mission effectiveness, your mission effectiveness. Everybody, we need to increase that mission readiness, and this is why this is defined by the Marine Corps order. Your user's health, your behavior, your family, your community, and the Marine Corps conduct discipline behavior as evidenced by one or more acts of alcohol-related misconduct. This is the black and white, and I have to read it to you by definition. Your prohibited activities by taking any prescription drug outside of your time frame, it's in excess of your directed dose, and it's prescribed to somebody else. Those are prohibited. Don't take any prescription drug unless it's prescribed to you and per the time hacks that are on it. 
So, also taking banned performance enhancing substances, steroids, some over the counter supplements, illegal substances such as marijuana, ecstasy, cocaine, heroin, LSD, PCP, and synthetic cannabinoids. Questions, comments, concerns? Okay. These are the possible warning signs of substance misuse. Another top, top point in there is the change in behavior. You have difficulty focusing. You see somebody that's a little more sluggish at work. They've got that glazed over look in their eyes. They've got that gradual deterioration in their appearance, their hygiene. Some that have certain drugs, they also tend to smell really horrible. This is standard, standardized by the Marine Corps. One standard drink of alcohol is a 12 ounce beer, a single shot, 1.5 ounces of liquor, five ounces of wine, or a cocktail with a single shot, which is also 1.5 ounces. No risk is a glass of milk. There's no alcohol in it. Low risk, two beers or less, or two standard drinks or less. And high risk is three standard drinks or more. Questions, comments, concerns about beer math? Good, we're pushing. Okay, what is your idea of healthy relationship? Keep in mind what you see or what you uh, perceive to be a healthy relationship in your life. Healthy relationships, they include those boundaries. They include having good communication, having respect, and they feel supported, they feel connected, they feel independent. By having that communication, having these boundaries, questions? Okay. So how do you manage conflict in a relationship? How do you know what you want for dinner the next day? How do you know that you can trust that person? Focus on the idea such as what you want for dinner the next day. Not the person, it's not their fault, they don't know. Are there questions about that? Okay. Allowing others to finishing their statements and thoughts. When you're speaking with somebody that you're having a relationship with, don't let those emotions run your discussion. If you're increasingly getting angrier and angrier at each other, separate. By showing kindness, showing understanding, having respect and caring will enable individuals to create and sustain healthy relationships. So, domestic abuse. Yeah, four questions. Domestic abuse is the use, attempted use or threatened use of physical force or violence of pattern or behavior resulting in emotional or phys psychological abuse, economic control, interference with personal liberties, and this behavior is directed toward a current or former spouse, a person with whom the abuser has a child, or a current or former intimate partner with whom the abuser lives or has lived. Black and white. So, some indicators of having domestic abuse. The risk factors, there's a background and history of abuse with that individual or that couple. Um, they're facing financial problems, they've got low self-esteem. Uh, their warning signs are some unreasonable jealousy. If you are at a family event, you might be able to see some of these factors. Um, threats of violence, controlling behavior, fear of partner. Okay, so now when it comes to reporting domestic violence, do not confuse reporting domestic violence with uh, SAPR, which will be covered this afternoon. But with the Family Advocacy Program, and not the SAPR program, which is Sexual Assault Prevention and Response, the Family Advocacy Program also opens restricted and unrestricted port reporting as far as domestic abuse. So when you have an adult domestic abuse victim and they want that confidential assistance, they can go see a family advocacy program coordinator to conduct a, a restricted report. 
and you, they work with that fab counselor or the, uh, the victim advocate and they get to evaluate the relationship choices, they get those resources that uh, that advocate can provide. For unrestricted reporting, I'm just going to point out that if there is a child involved at any time during any domestic uh, abuse incident, it's going to be an unrestricted report. So that family advocacy uh, program representative will file an unrestricted report anytime there's a child involved. Questions, comments, concerns? Push it. Okay, who here has kids? I know there's more than that. Who here has like nieces, nephews, takes care of, uh, takes care of uh, younger kids? Okay, absolutely. Parenting is tough, it's tough. I have a six-year-old daughter and a three-year-old terrorist son, but it's rewarding because they're adorable and they're scary smart. Um, think of that Marine, you know, who balances that professional and per, uh, personal responsibilities of parenting. Think of that Marine. How in the heck are they getting up to PT in the morning, get their kids ready, get their kids to where they need to be, get to work, deal with their Marines, <laughs> going to chow PT probably, and then coming back, going to work a little more, and then got to get their kids, you gotta go home and then get ready for the next day all over again. Some Marines are single parents. That is tough, that is tough. I've seen you, I've seen you all work. It's pretty, pretty amazing. What are some of those things that you admire about that parenting style? We can move on. So some parenting pointers, if some of you are aspiring parents, maybe one day, it might not be in the near future, or if those that are right now. Nurturing your child and developing that close bond. Getting up to speed on how children develop at each age, like my three-year-old terrorist. <laughs> if you have a three-year-old, you'd understand. If you know of somebody with three-year-olds, have a little sympathy, maybe not, okay. Connecting socially with other parents who have kids of the same age. They understand. It's normal. It's normal what kids are doing at their age because they're kids. They're doing their thing. They're developing. They're learning. They're growing. MCCS, community groups, resources, resources, resources. All day. I could go all day with anything that you might have that you're concerned in your life. There's a resource for it. Okay, child abuse and neglect. Child abuse, it includes the physical, sexual, or emotional abuse of a, or neglect of a child. You see it in base housing sometimes where there's maybe a kid running around and they're absolutely dirty, they're untaken care of. That's when you need to report it. Somebody's not taking care of that child. Some warning signs. The child might have bruising, burns, other injuries without explanation. You could be walking around in a store if you've got that uh, situational awareness and you might see some of these signs. Caregiver, caregivers withholding medical or dental care. Some children need to see a doctor. Some children are not getting like, the care they need. A child misses a lot of days from school or daycare. My daughter's classmates have, some of them go absent for days, but it's not from neglect, it's from not having those resources to be able to get on the virtual. Everyone is a mandated reporter of child abuse and neglect. Contact the Family Advocacy Program. If you don't know what that is, it's across the street from the main gym, if everybody knows where that is. It's across the street from the main gym, and it's that little cluster of buildings a little further down from the post office. Contact law enforcement. They can help you report any known or suspected cases. 
So, did you know? Dropping, pushing, or shoving, grabbing, or yanking limbs, shaking, spanking, or hitting child, a child with an object or hand, rape, sodomy, exposing a child to pornography, molestation, berating or humiliating a child, lack of supervision, exposure to physical hazards, and a child witnessing domestic abuse are all signs of child abuse and they need to be reported. So for more information, this is the Marine Corps order and it's a critical to seek for yourself and others. Let's see. Okay. So I mentioned resources throughout. Resources, knowing where to connect with help. You've got your peers, you've got your chain of command. If you've got that good support group, if you've got, you've got the chaplain, you've got medical, MCCS is a huge institution that is there to support Marines. If you go onto the MCCS website, you will see it's nothing but resources. The de-stress line, it works. It's 24-7. If you find that you need somebody to talk to and you don't know if you want to make it, speak to somebody closer personally to you, you can call this number, get on the website. These, these resources are available to you. Local resources, Oscar team members, if uh, command, if you are interested in developing an Oscar team, uh, this is my contact, and I will train you up an Oscar trainer and a whole Oscar team. If you don't know what an Oscar trainer is, it is the operational stress control and readiness team member who ends up with tons of resources and is embedded within your unit that has eyes on to see if there are any behavioral changes or behavioral health that could be addressed and to get those Marines to help, thereby increasing your mission readiness, your unit readiness, your unit cohesion. Chaplain, RPs, medical staff, uh, we have H.M. Warren on deck. Ah, there you are, wait a minute. Uh, we got the SPPO, it's MCCS Behavioral Health, the SAC is on base, his name is Eric Shelton, and that's his office number. Community counseling program, new parent support program, military life uh, counselor, oh, the, as you asked about the MIFLIC earlier, sir, um, PHA. She has all of those resources. If you are active duty, however, the MIFLIC will see you. And it's that same cluster of buildings across the street from the main gym. Questions, comments, concerns? Oh, I got a question. Yes, good morning. Uh, so I know most of these programs are meant for us Marines, active duty or reserves. Uh, is something like the de-stress line something that uh, loved ones or something you can utilize? Anyone can access the de-stress line. Give them a call. Give them the situation, and they will connect you with a, an, another resource. It's just an net, endless network of resources until you find the help that you need. Does that make sense? Did I answer your question? Awesome. Thank you. Good question. Yes, military one source. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. So reintegration. So somebody had experienced something. They got the help they needed, and now they're coming back to work. Having that successful reintegration after seeking help means that Marine is getting back on his feet or her feet. They've got, they've got to rebuild that confidence with their leadership. So, give support, give support, be that support system. If you don't, if you don't have one, a support system, go get one. Questions? Okay, we've increased our awareness of behavioral health topics. We've discussed all Marines experience stress, and we did not cover any of the scenarios, but I'm sure you have some in mind. Questions, comments, concerns? This has been UMAP at 3.0. All right, your next speaker is going to be